implant treatment? Smoking and implant treatment. It's one of many factors that we consider when we make a recommendation for you to have an implant. Uh, smoking, diabetes, these are all risk factors. Just because you smoke, it does not mean that you cannot have an implant, but your chance of success is reduced. Now, what, how does smoking affect uh, success rates? We know that smoking uh, reduces success rates of any medical procedure, of any treatment you have, including uh, dental implant surgery. When we put an implant into your jaw, we want your bone to heal around it. It's a process that's called implant integration. It relies on good blood supply. When you smoke, blood supply is reduced and therefore the chances of immediate stability of that implant is also reduced. So smoking can reduce success of the initial phase of, of healing, but also affect long-term success. What we also know that in smokers, uh, even if the implant integrates, it's more likely to lose uh, a good cuff of gum around it. Uh, the gum is protective for implants, so you want to maintain that cuff of protective gum around it. But what happens is that inflammatory cytokines, which are uh, factors in the blood that increase inflammation in the body, are more common in people who smoke, or in other words, they increased in people who smoke, and therefore they cause a breakdown of gums around natural teeth, but also around the implants. As well as that, the underlying bone is more likely to recede around implants, even if the implant has been there for, uh, for five years, for 10 years, it's still more likely to, to recede and therefore you're more likely to develop a condition that's called peri-implantitis, which is an infection around implants that often leads to implant loss long term. What about bone growth? Bone grafting is in the same category as implants, but it's probably even more important that you don't smoke for bone grafting. So what I say to my patients is, if you smoke and you do not trust yourself to quit smoking, uh, we can attempt implants as long as you are aware of a potential increased risk of failure. But success rates are still reasonable in people who smoke depending on how much you smoke as well. But grafts, bone grafts rely on really good blood circulation. If blood circulation is impaired, the graft that we spend so much time and money uh, putting in there will die off and won't take. So I would highly advise, if possible, to consider quitting smoking sometime before we consider um, bone grafting procedures for a, a potential implant in the future. Realistically, what are my chances of success with my implant if I continue smoking? The chances of success with implants if you continue to smoke are actually reasonable. I hate to say that, say that because I want your chances of success approaching 100%. But what studies tell us is uh, that the, re the success rates are reduced by anywhere from 6 to 20% depending on the study and depending on how much you smoke. Obviously, if you smoke one cigarette a day, your success rates are higher than somebody who smokes 20 a day. Yes, you can have implants. We can attempt implants while you're smoking, but you really need to weigh it up and decide yourself on how much risk you're prepared to accept. Sometimes they work and sometimes they work well uh, in the initial phase and then you develop complications and other times they fail to integrate in the initial phase and other times they work very well. My recommendation still stands that if you are contemplating then I would definitely recommend to quit first and we can help you as much as we can and then have your implants. But if you feel that you absolutely can't then yes calculate your risk and by all means. <laughs> 
Is the risk the same in the top versus the bottom job? Interestingly, the chance of success in the top jaw versus the bottom jaw uh, with implants in people who smoke is actually different. Generally, the chances of success with implants is reduced in the top jaw, not to say that they automatically fail, but uh, literature report has reported over and over and over again that the chance of success of implants is higher in the lower jaw than the upper jaw and that's explained by the fact that the bone is denser in the lower jaw and it's more porous in the upper jaw so when we plan for implants let's say for mouth implants we generally put uh, tend to put a few more implants in the top jaw now that all doesn't always apply it depends on how much bone there is if we can get long implants in that's perfectly adequate but if we're getting in shorter implants in the upper jaw sometimes it pays to put a few extra ones uh, whereas in the bottom jaw um, you can go go for fewer implants so the same applies with people who smoke because the bone is more porous in the upper jaw there is a higher risk of failure if you smoke. Another interesting thing is because the back of the lower jaw is partly covered by the tongue, that is thought to influence success rate with implants in people who smoke. So if the, an area is not exposed to nicotine as, as much, then the chance of success is also higher. And one more thing I want to mention about the upper jaw. When we do sinus grafting or sinus lift, if um, you need implants in this area here at the back of your face, sometimes sinuses, which are cavities in the face, come down quite low and we have to graft them first before we do implants. Now, what we know is that in people who smoke, who have, let's say, a successful sinus graft, and then we go and place an implant into that sinus graft, the chances of failure of that implant that's been placed into this grafted bone in people who smoke is twice as high. So even if the graft takes, the implant is still twice as likely to fail in the at the back of the top jaw when is the best time to quit smoking the best time to quit smoking as soon as you can uh, the sooner the better the body takes up to five years to recover from smoking so what we know is that even in people who who are having implants who used to smoke within the last few years they still have a reduced success rate with implants. The longer it is from the time you quit smoking to the time you have any surgery, the, the better. The higher is your chance of success. But uh, there is significant literature that indicates that if you quit smoking at least two weeks prior to your surgery, you immediately increase your chance of success. And if you stay away from smoking for at least one to two months after the procedure, but hopefully once you quit, you quit for good. But as we know, it's not an easy thing and it's easy for me to, to say this and to say this to my patients, but I've witnessed too many. It's difficult to do, I understand, um, but the reality is such. The sooner the better, but at least two weeks prior to your surgery. And if it's, an, if it's a bone grafting surgery, then even longer than that, I'd recommend a few months. Is there any way or suggestions to help me quit smoking? What can I suggest to help you quit smoking? I don't think I've got a, a definite solution for you. Uh, but what I do know is that many of my patients have quit smoking and they inspire me. They inspire me to tell you uh, stories about themselves and the, the most inspirational story is of our patient Claire. And she, when I spoke to her before she had to have all and four procedure, she said to me, look, I've smoked for so many years. Realistically, I am not gonna quit smoking. And I said to her, Claire, do you realize that what we're doing could potentially fail? She says, yep, I realize and I accept the risk. So let's go ahead. And guess what? She quit smoking. And when I asked her about how she did it, 
she says, what smoking? I've never quit. She says, I just told myself that I might not have that next one. And then the next one I might not have either. And maybe I'll just stay away from it for about a day or so. Let's see if I can do that. And then another day. And then another month. And she's come back for her six monthly checkup a few weeks ago. And she said to me, the last smoke I had was a year ago before my surgery. And I still have it. I haven't thrown it out. But I do not have the desire to pick it up. But I've never really quit smoking. I never gave myself that commitment. So I find that inspirational. She didn't force herself. She had support from her, uh, from her husband. And I think that is so, so important. Uh, we know that any addictions are usually, usually go back to our childhood. We know that people manage their emotions with smoking or drinking or whatever drugs they tend to take in difficult times, times of stress. And it's so complex. There is no solution that I have to this big puzzle. Do the best you can. Uh, I, I hope you've, you have supportive family, supportive friends. And um, it's not just about strong will. Uh, I think we all understand that. You might be a strong willed person and still find that smoking helps you regulate um, your emotions. And it's so easy to, to pick pick up a cigarette in uh, times of stress. But what can a doctor do for you? A doctor can prescribe a number of quite powerful and effective medications such as Zyban and Champix. I've had quite a few patients who found them very effective. Uh, some people can't tolerate them. They can be difficult. Some people have uh, vivid dreams uh, and some people just can't tolerate them, but some people do. Uh, and it's actually, these medications can help you stay off them long term as well. There are obviously nicotine patches, there, are ni there is nicotine chewing gum. Uh, so all of those can be very helpful. But often for many people, it's not just one thing. I appreciate how difficult it is to quit smoking, how easy it is for a, for a doctor or a dentist in that uh, initial uh, 45 minute consultation uh, to tell you that you need to quit smoking for for increased success rates but it's not so easy for you and we understand that too I can help as much as I can um, but um, we often travel the journey together